Hey folks, welcome to Low Country Wildlife. On today's show, we're going to take this little Oneida Victor one and a half inch rubber jaw trap and we're going to show you how to take predators off your property. Deer season just ended and now's the time for predator control to keep them turkeys and them fawns safe for the upcoming year. Don't go anywhere else. You'll be right back with some trapping action. Low Country Wildlife, hosted by Steve the Legend Drummond and Stacy Atkinson with the LCW Junior Pro Staffers. LCW is sponsored by Marshalls Marine, 301 Processing and Taxidermy, Irby Street Sporting Goods, Maury Sportsman's Preserve, Palmetto Pulpwood and Timber Company, Palmetto Brush Control, and by The Market on Main. 301 Processing and Taxidermy has been serving the Carolinas for over 18 years with the most lifelike mounts anywhere. With three full-time taxidermists on site in a state-of-the-art 9,000 square foot facility, they can handle any size order. Deer, wild hogs, turkeys, fish, ducks, you name it, they can mount it. And 301 is the area's only APHIS certified taxidermist that can handle your big game mounts for animals outside of the United States. So for the most lifelike mounts, give 301 Processing and Taxidermy a call today. Come to Marshall's Marine where there's a boat show every day. The only on-site test lake in South Carolina. Where all our boats are kept indoors, shop rain or shine. Come and be a part of our family and we'll take care of you. At marshallsmarine.com, where family fun begins. Marshall's Marine, your Carolina's birding supermarket in Lake City and now in Georgetown. Irby Street Sporting Goods is the PD's foremost outfitter. They have everything for the outdoorsman like clothing from Drake, Browning, Salt Life, and Ducks Unlimited, coolers by Yeti and K2, sunglasses by Costa Del Mar, plus thousands of rods and reels to choose from. Irby Street also has the only full-service archery pro shop with a 25-yard indoor range. You'll also find a wide selection of bows for men, women, and children from top-name brands including Matthews, Mission, PSE, Elite, and Struthers. Irby Street Sporting Goods, Florence. The Market on Main in Lakeview, South Carolina is more than just a grocery store. They're a local, family-owned market that caters to local residents and those passing through. The Market on Main specializes in fresh produce as well as custom hand-cut meats. Stop by today and see for yourself The Market on Main. All right, folks, so welcome back to LCW. I'll show you real quick these traps. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it. We won't get in the woods. We'll show you some stuff out there. But this is Onita Victor one and a half inch rubber jaw trap. The key is the rubber jaws. Rubber jaws, not metal on metal, rubber. Snaps on his foot, rubber jaw. Not going to break his foot, not going to hurt him. Ain't no teeth in there. Don't worry about it. Got springs on it, pull on it. It can't go nowhere. He's just stuck. Best way ever to get coyotes, fox, and bobcats off your property. There ain't no other way to do it. And if you not go get them off your property, then you go have turkeys get eaten, you go have deer get eaten, you go have rabbits get eaten, you have squirrels get eaten, you have everything get eaten. So it's up to you whether the land management. Deer season just went out, this is the time we go. Um, Steve Drummond's out chasing, chasing uh, ducks as we got a town. So I had to call him a good buddy, Charlie Gray, to go with me. And me and Charlie go way back, and he's a great friend of mine. He actually had some property he was having coyote problems with. So we decided this week to go. His kids, uh, Liam and Lee, Lily, were supposed to go with us, and Liam got sick that week. He was all upset he couldn't get go, but he did get to see some of the animals in the back of the truck uh, when we come back in the mornings, but we'll get get up with him next time. But uh, I'm glad that we got to go take these animals off property. We had a great time. So let's go straight to the woods, and all we did was film over a week. I mean, literally, all you're going to see is let's cut the camera on. There's an animal in the trap. We'll show you a little bit about how to remake a set, but you can go online and Google all the stuff on how to set these traps. It's, it's not rocket science. And uh, But anyway... That's it. Hey, let's go to the woods. Me and Charlie Gregg getting it done LCW style.
first catch of the year. Add Charlie to Snapchat. <laughs> What you doing, big boy? Huh? What you doing? That's funny, because I came here yesterday and there was a slew of turkeys standing right about 30, 40 yards right there. All right, Mr. Charlie, hold this camera. I'll get you out. Predator trapping. You gonna be relocated, buddy. No broke feet, a little mashed. Where's in trap? He's fine. That's a calm thing, ain't he? All the dust off faced it, buddy, huh? Huh? That's all I'm gonna take us home like a pet. <laughs> that little piece of chicken wasn't <laughs> that little piece of chicken in there for bait. He's like, that little piece of chicken worth all that last time. All right, that in here. After they were all that calm, we'd be in business. We're gonna relocate him. He's not gonna get any more turkeys or rabbits or squirrels or anything else from right here. So we're gonna take him and relocate him somewhere else. So hey, let's go see if we can find something else on the track. That's a lean mean one. That's, the difference, their temperament's always different because like, you saw how calm that one was right down yonder. I mean, I was right down the other end of the field, and you tell the difference in this one. I mean, just his temperament, his demeanor's different. Yeah. About handling every animal's a little different. I tell people all the time. You saw me pick that one up with my bare hands. You can just tell when you walk up to him how you can handle him. This one ain't gonna be like that. What's up with that beard, dude? <laughs> Foxes love it. Foxes love it. Run the camera. Now I've always thought myself that. Obviously, this fox is here. The other fox was 400 yards down there. They've met. <laughs> They've had to come across each other at some point in time. So I always just stick them together because I mean, it ain't like they haven't seen each other, you know? Let's go a lot smoother if you cooperate. Uh, I'm not going to choke you, I just don't want you to bite me. He's little, but he's strong. <laughs> Give me your tail. Mm-hmm. It smells like Charlie. <laughs> <clears throat> Beard isn't as pretty. Uh -huh. His beard isn't as pretty. His beard isn't as pretty. <clears throat> now, I've said this before any of y'all's watched the trapping videos on YouTube and stuff I put out there. Fox or fox. Gray fox or gray fox. You can put all the gray fox in that cage you want, and they'll stay right there and they hardly ever say a word to each other. They'll get a little fussy every now and then. If you put a red fox and a gray fox together, that's like putting a cat and a dog together in the cage. They will tear the world apart. But Charlie, it's cold. Let's just have a good check a few more traps. Sounds good to me. That's number three this morning. You got a Snapchat. Follow us on Snapchat, LCW style. To get these wild, cool, up-to-date snaps like this one. All right. Sorry for doing that. I still get back to business. So you're 50% now, it's three foxes and, and six traps. Is that a pretty good morning? Yeah, that's a real good morning. Like I say, gray fox live in about a one mile square. So this gray fox didn't come from somebody else's property. This gray fox lives on, on 
this property here, just like these other two do. That's why you catch them quick. Now, a red fox lives in like 10 miles square. So a red fox travels, he might not be here today. He might not come back through here for three or four days. So that's why you gotta set these traps and work them for a few days. Coyotes the same way. They don't just stay right here. A coyote is really a nomad. He's just gonna travel wherever food's at. So people always say, oh, I'm deer hunting, man. I got coyotes everywhere. Coyotes just eat me up. They're all on, you know, all over my property. And what, what they do, they're there because you got corn on the ground. And corn on the ground brings everything that these predators eat. As soon as corn's gone, the food source is gone, the coyotes go back roaming around. But these gray fox live right here. This 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 fox is living off the rabbits that we hunting and the quail your daddy's got here and you know the chickens up there in the chicken coop. He, he's gonna live right here off of anything he can eat. He's not going anywhere. That's why the first couple of nights was what you catch is a lot of them gray fox. But uh, I'll take them. Everyone's a good one because we ain't got to worry about eating our rabbits, so we go eat. Ah, oh, you little sneaker. You little sneaker. Guys, right, so I see that one. You can tell the difference in this one. I don't know if y'all paid attention to the other ones. This one here is fat. This is a fat. This joker's many. This place is full of rabbits. Them over there in the tall pines where we caught them probably not as much food source sources as it is over here but he already had this territory so no other fox can get over here but um oh he smells great <laughs> that's me <laughs> get your big booty in there that's we're fixing to have to start putting <laughs> <laughs> There's no room in the end. But you see how calm they are together? The gray fox like that. But you can't put a red and a gray in the same thing. They'll tear the world apart. But it's an essential part, you know, and, and Charlie's a timber guy. And, you know, when you work a property for timber and, and land management, you know, as the, as the guys do at Palmetto Pulpwood and Timber and stuff, that, this is a crucial part of the game is to, to get the predators off your property so you can have flourishing you know small game populations and, and turkeys and everything else and even down to i laugh about catching possums and stuff we had caught one this morning i'm sure we will eventually but uh you know possums and coons and stuff like that man they eat quail eggs uh, duck eggs uh, even down to crows man crows are a terrible nuisance animal people don't realize it. He'll, he'll, he'll eat every kind of egg there is um so that's part of the game is to get these off. And it's work, but it's something to do in January and February when uh, there ain't nothing else to do. Y'all stick with us. We'll take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back with some more trapping here at LCW. Hey, buddy. That's probably one of the prettiest animals in the woods. Yeah. One of the most destructive, too. Got this trap from my buddy Thomas's, Mr. Thomas Webbs's house. It's like it's seen its better days. All right, buddy. Let's see if we can do this. Let's see if we can do this, huh? What about you? Bite me. Come on. You act a lot different than the fox we had in here yesterday. Come on, I ain't gonna hurt you. I promise, I ain't gonna hurt you. He's a pretty thing that he would eat you alive if he had half a chance. What you didn't see was there was turkeys in this field and pulled up. And that's why these fox are over here. They're chasing their young turkeys. 
Get your big old bushy tail in there. Get your big booty in there. That's a wrap. Take him to a different location. Hey buddy, how you doing today? That's pretty. I mean, if coyotes can be pretty, I reckon he's pretty. Those, uh, as everybody thinks, that's the ultimate predator. The ultimate predator in South Carolina, the coyote. I still think it's a bobcat, but I have no doubt that that joker there does a lot of damage. Um, everybody's seen trail cam pictures of them toting baby deer off and turkeys and everything else, and I mean that's it. Problem is, he's a. Sorry about the wind blowing 80 miles an hour, but it's a. Problem is, is he's a nomad. He kind of just travels around. So this trap's been here. I don't know, Charlie said Saturday. It's Tuesday, four days. Trap sit right there, and nothing's come by. It. But I'd seen signs where he'd been coming through here digging in this field. And. Uh, Big old foot on you. <laughs> Smells good too. There you go. I mean, they act about like a dog. He's not near as vicious as everybody thinks he is. Now he does a lot of damage to uh he does a lot of damage to uh to turkeys and deer. He'll eat your house cats, he'll eat everything. But as you can see, when you get him cow cornered down like this, he acts a lot like a dog. He's not as uh, wild and vicious as uh, a lot of animals are. But uh, we're happy to take him off the property, seeing as the property owner is standing there holding the camera. And I think we'll name this one Bob. He's a solid heavy coat. Ugh. Get in there, buddy, boo. Get in there. Sorry, I didn't mean to drop you. <laughs> I know. Look at me like, what in the world? Folks, we're having a good time this week. Taking a bunch of prayers off for the farm. Here's another coat we caught this morning. Uh, that makes three coats off this farm. This trap here, been sitting, caught a possum in this trap about four days ago. Set it back. Nothing's come to it. Nothing's messed with it. Nothing's bothered. And uh, this morning we got a coat in it. And another pretty big coat. These coats are big. These are these are a little bit above average size for what you see around. But uh, we're happy to have him. We're happy to take him off off of the uh, the property. Thing is, I only brought one cage for coats, and I already got one in it. So we're gonna have to put two of them together. So let's see how this goes. All right, buddy. Let's do this. I know. If you give me just a minute, I'll get you out of there. All right, calm down. Calm down. Don't hurt yourself. Don't hurt yourself. It's okay. It's okay. Don't hurt yourself. You got a briar in your tail and you got me in my hand. Help me help you. What you got to do? Give me your foot out of there. Just like all the rest of them. No foot damage. He just held. He's not hurt. And he's going to a new place. Alright, y'all meet. Kiss. Whatever. Because y'all fixing to be real close to each other, okay? Maybe do something, Stacy. No, right, just hold tight. <clears throat> oh, no. The gym's paying off now, ain't it? Yeah. 
All right, I'll make nice. Table for two. They're pretty, I mean, they're like dogs in a dog box or, you know, you have dogs get in into a dog house and you home them. Them, them are canines. They're dogs. Uh, you know, some dogs don't get along. Most of them do. And coyotes are the same way. They don't normally fight. Like I say, you put gray fox together in a cage. You put red fox together in a cage. You just don't want to mix up the breeds because they don't like each other. Folks, you hear us talking about fox pens all the time or coyote pens, whatever. And this is one of them here. And you can see it's just... I think this pen, Jay, how big is this pen? 130, 140 acres, I think, something like that. And it's all fenced it's in, as you can see the wire here. And essentially, you turn, you've seen this film shows in the field trials before. The coyotes have the houses built all in here for them to get in. The pen owner comes in here and feeds them every day. And they'll come out in the road and eat just like a dog would. When you feed a dog at your house, don't you bite my finger, y'all heavy. You can put y'all on Weight Watchers. Close that gate back so they don't escape. They don't worry about me escaping. I ain't worried about you, Jay. I've tried to run you off for years. You ever had one bite you? Yep, I have. Sort of like a one of the things you learn from after they bite you once, you don't like to do it twice. All right, y'all ready? Release the hounds. All right, y'all so scared. Don't all run at once. And those, so where's he going? Boy, them traps hurt them, don't they? Yeah, they terrible. look terrible. Feet all broke up, that's what everybody thinks. And they'll run around the pen here today and they'll find them a, a few boxes, houses to get in. They'll figure out where the food is. And then the pen owner will come in today and feed them. And then after they get settled in with the pen, they'll come in here in a couple weeks and start putting puppies in here, letting the puppies chase them around a little bit. And if the coyote don't like it, he'll go in a house and he'll be safe. And them coyotes will live the rest of their life in this pen and get fed every day and live in a house and they're not causing problems on anybody's property. And uh, that's the name of the game, get them out. Just like a retirement home. Just like a retirement home, which at the rate we go, it ain't long we're gonna be in one. <laughs> All right, folks, we made another catch this morning on another one of these big male coats. And this one ain't quite as bad as some of them. But uh, this trap's been here days Thursday. Set them last Saturday, so been here almost not quite a week. And it hadn't been touched. I have not done anything. I put the lure in the ground. I set the trap. I knew everything was right, and I just left it, and I haven't touched it. We rode by it every morning. I hadn't got out the truck. hadn't messed with it at all. And that just goes to show you how much these animals roam. There's not one single canine has come by this trap this week. This animal ain't been here all week. This animal just come through here last night, and when he come through here, it was ready for him, and uh, we got him. Folks, that's going to wrap us up here this week at LCW. We've had a great week. Thank you for coming along with us. Thank you to Charlie Gregg for running the camera for us this week. We got to take some predators off. Hope you learned a little something. We got to see something you don't see every day. That's what LCW is all about, is doing stuff that you can do right here on your farms and on your hunting clubs. You know, check us out online this week at lowcountrywildlife.com, Team Low Country Wildlife on Facebook, and you can guarantee we'll be back on the water in the bushes next week doing it LCW style.